Hello, Scorpio, and with a reading for the sign of Scorpio. Uh, Scorpio, this could resonate with anyone who um, has the sign of Scorpio in their chart, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Um, my friends, I am going to mainly use this deck today, and I'm going to use a free form style of free style of reading. So um, let's go ahead and get right into this. Uh, get right into these energies, Scorpio. What is the situation around Scorpio, please? What is the situation around Scorpio? What is the situation around Scorpio? All right, um, Scorpio, as I get started into this reading, I just, I do feel a pushing at my back. There's a pushing at my back. So there is some sort of pressure here. Um, it does have some connection with the heart center and something with the, with the expression. So um, you are feeling at this point in time being pushed forward, being pushed forward. I don't think it's being pulled forward. It's a pushing energy, almost like there's a hand at my back pushing me forward. So there could be a, some kind of reluctance here by you. Could be a reluct. Okay, so here we go. We're starting with the Four of Pentacles energy. And the Four of Pentacles energy is an energy of holding on. Holding on to what you know. Holding on to what you have. Holding on to a belief system. Holding on to money. Holding on to a relationship. Holding on to something. Yes, you do treasure it, Scorpio. Yes, you do. Yes, you have been in... Uh, situations in your life where you've had nothing. You've had no one and you've had nothing. And so you know when you have something, it's to be treasured. It's a reverent energy. And no one's going to take that kind of energy away from you. No one's going to take the reverence away from you. No one's going to take the knowledge away from you of what um, stability means. It's a very intense energy. Um, it's a it's a gratefulness energy merging with um, an awareness of <sighs> awareness of the special knowledge that you have, that you have, Scorpio. And it's colored with a tinge of shadow. And that's beautiful, Scorpio. That's so beautiful. It's intense and it's, it's mystical. That, that shadow energy. And it's something here that you're wanting to hold onto. And it's not reasons for necessarily greediness. It's, it's a energy of, understanding the importance of it and understanding the value that it has brought to you in your life. So where you're coming from is a deep, intense place and no one can take that away from you. Now, others might not understand it. They might not be able to grasp it. They might, it might be a head scratcher for them, but for you, you understand it and no one can take it away from you. That said, you're being pushed forward now. You're being pushed forward somehow reluctantly and with some hesitation into something new, into something new. We have the page of swords with the page of cups. <laughs> There's something new here. It's something that could really have potential, Scorpio. And I think you know that. I think you know that because although you have these pages here, you have these two threes. And three threes energies are about, um, it's like a seven, but less than a seven. So um, it's like a three. So this is how you kind of move into change. The three, the five, the seven, right? The nine. It's like you see this coming and you can kind of move forward in your mind. You can move forward in your mind and you can move forward in your heart and you can kind of see what's there in that experience, what's there in the possibilities. 
and it fills you with a certain energy that brings a, a sense of honor. So this is a slower energy. Just give me a moment now, Scorpio, because it's, it's, it's something that is in the energy that might not really actually be, um, totally created yet. So, um, I'm taking this energy that's coming through and I'm, I'm like taking it and my brain is putting words to it. I'm channeling this through. Um, it's filled with honor. It's filled with a sense of something bigger than yourself. And it's filled with a sense of emotional, um, emotional reparation, emotional re receipt, emo receiving something that could be quite emotionally healing, but there's an energy here of, are you worth it? Okay. So this is an energy that is, it's like it's undeveloped. It's, it's in the development process. And this is going to happen in the next couple of weeks. So there's going to be some, okay, let me go back now. Okay. I'm glad I uncovered that because that now I can feel all lightness in the energy. All right. So thanks for sticking with me, Scorpio. Um, these kind of abstract type readings that I do free form readings are a different style and it does, um, uh, challenge me as far as my energy work and the way that I bring information through. It challenges me. It's also fun. And I think when I do your reading Scorpio, um, it seems like every time I do a reading for you, it's, it's, um, it is a experience for me and it's an experience for you. And I, I think that spirit uses this time to, to, I'm um, really can to really get in some really interesting energies. Now, moving back forward, it feels like there's some, well, I know that there's something new coming in. The Page of Cups is here. And when the Page of Cups is here, there's something, there's a new introduction. There's something new that inspires you. It's an uplift of the heart, uplift of the soul. It wakes you up. It brightens your days. Um, it it re re-engages you again with your dreams. If you're introduced to a new person and you're single, this person could... Um, help you vibrate in a certain kind of way and, and maybe reinstill this dream that maybe you could meet someone one day and maybe this is the person. It's like an uh, uplift, right? Maybe you come across somebody who's starting an, a new business and they might have an opening for you and maybe you work with marketing and maybe they need to have someone who's a marketer and maybe you could work in Maybe this person works in an industry that you've already always been fascinated with. And, and maybe you go home that evening after you've met this new person, you're like, Hey, maybe I can talk to that person, let them know what I do and how I could really be, you know, a valuable asset on their team. And maybe I could then do something that would allow me to broaden my, broaden my talents and really kind of delve into an area that I've always been wanting to in my work. Right. It, it, it brings the magic. It, it, it lights up the imagination again, whatever this is, whether this is an introduction to a new person, whether it's something that comes in here um, that you connect with that helps um, light up your life in some way. Now, there there is something here with this page of swords that um, it, it's, a, it's a very watchful energy. It's, it's a nervous energy. It's an apprehensive energy. So you're being pushed forward, I feel, by the universe. Um, by, by your guidance team or, or by your whatever you believe in, right? Something is like pushing you forward a little bit. They're like, it's like um, when you go to learn how to ride a bicycle and the person who's teaching you says, all right, I'm going to push you off. And you're like, wait, wait, no, no, wait. And then off you go, off you go. And then after a few pedals, you might, you know, come to a little bit of a crash or something, you know, but it's that feeling that, you know, or maybe you're getting onto a roller coaster ride. You're like, oh, I don't know if I'm sure if I want to do this. Um, or maybe you're going on um, a, um, a, a date with someone and, and you're getting out of, you drove there and you're getting out of the car and you're getting ready to go up into the restaurant or into the bar or something. And you're like, oh my goodness, here it goes. I'm walking in. Oh my gosh. You know, it's, it's that feeling of <sighs> you're being pushed. And you're kind of dragging your feet a little bit, but you also know that it would be ridiculous if you wouldn't do this. Like later that night or next week or something, you'd be like, Jody, you know, Jody, why didn't, 
Why did you not do it? You know that this is something that you're going to at least dip your toe into, right? You're at least going to, um, you're, you're at least going to experience this in some way or another. There's, there's really no reason why you shouldn't do it because you have this three of cups and the three of wands here, right? This is an energy of, um, emotional togetherness. This is an energy of emotion, emotional blossoming, um, connecting people with people and heart centers with heart centers, right? It's something Scorpio. It's the, it's the, the light to your shadow, right? It's a light to your shadow. When I was talking earlier about the little tinging of shadow with the four of pentacles, that's so intense and so beautiful because it's there because you, it, there's a value place in that. You've learned something from that. Um, you, you don't want to get rid of that part of yourself because it's such, it's such a vital part of yourself. This is like that light to that shadow. This is the balancing of yourself and it feels good. And you can't really say no to that. Right? You can't really say no to that because it's something that the soul is connecting to now. It's like Velcro, right? <laughs> it's like Velcro. It's like two magnets that are um, not pushing away from each other. Oh my goodness, that's not a very good analogy. I don't know anything about magnets. I just know that sometimes they pull together and sometimes they don't. <laughs> so I'll go with that one. But um, it, it's something that you... You can't say no to this because it would, you know, it will be so silly and you would never, if you said no to this, you would never want to admit that to anyone. That would be a deep, dark secret that you would carry for a long time if you would say no to this. Now you can always say no later, right? After you experience this, you can always say, I don't think it's my cup of tea or uh, I think I'll just, I think I'll just go along my way and pretend like that didn't really happen or whatever you want to do. But to say no to stepping in and, and experiencing this in the beginning would be something you would never want to admit to anyone, right? Because it would, it would show that you, um, that, that there was a door that was open that you didn't step into. And this is something like, you know, you know, deep inside of you, but you know, with this page of swords, it, it, there is a, um, there is a very watchfulness here. There could be a little bit of a cynicalness. It's, it's a part of that little bit of shadow that I see connected to the four of pentacles. And that's okay because you have felt, um, you have felt a, a lack of something in your life. And so what you have, you are, it's like, it's like what you have, you, you treasure what you have. You treasure what, are you looking for more in your life? Yes, you are looking for more in your life, but you're treasuring what you have. And you, you know, within yourself, when you move forward and you start um, stepping into new experiences and opening up your world in this new way, that there will be a change to that for, right? You, you know that, that there will be some kind of change there and some sort of disorderly, um, I was going to say disorderly conduct. See, I'm in this very interesting, um, it's, it's a really fun energy too, Scorpio. Um, this group of you, I would love to just hang out with you guys because you guys have humor. You have a little bit of shadow, which is really fun. You have life experiences. That means you have a depth of character. Um, you have a willingness to step forward. You have this practicalness. You can laugh at yourselves. It's a really fun group of people, Scorpio. So, um, whatever this is, and, and, I think that you're, I'm, I keep getting off track here, which is quite interesting. You, you guys could be people that, um, don't mind taking little side roads, right? You don't mind taking little side roads. You don't mind getting caught up by the squirrel. You know, you don't mind getting distracted by things because it can lead to like interesting little experiments. So you have the explorer personality inside of you, right? You have the, you know, you have the, like the Lewis and Clark kind of, energy within you, right? You have that pioneer spirit, but see, now I'm onto the Oregon trail. Goodness. See, the thing is, is that you've already been on the Oregon trail, right? You've already had to throw off things out of your wagon and you've already, um, experienced death and you've experienced a kind of starvation. So you, you realize if you're going to go down another Oregon trail, if you're going to go into another exploratory session in your life, that it's got to be worth it for you. It's got to have something there that's worth it for you because you're not going to give up what you have until you know by darn sure that what you're stepping into is better than what you have now. 
And no one's going to take that away from you, Scorpio. And you know what? Nobody is going to take that away from you because you have the strength of character to keep it. You have the strength of character to keep the four of pentacles if you want. All I'm saying here is that these three energies are about the connectiveness between people, the connectiveness between hearts, the softness and light, it, the softness in life, the light um, that's going to blend with that little shadowy tinge that I feel there with you, Scorpio. And it's passionate with the three of wands. It's exciting. It's something that's, um, you can't say no to it. It's like, I don't know. It's like you can't help reaching for that piece of candy. That's what's beautiful about you, Scorpio. I mean, honestly, it's really a beautiful energy. I don't even know if they can capture something like this in a movie. I'm sure that, yes, they do it all the time. It's just that um, it's something that's so personal that happens within you. It would be hard to, um, it would be hard to capture the emotional. That's the Scorpio energy though, isn't it? That's the Scorpio energy. This is something that you can't, it's like when you, when you feel it within you, like the soul in the body and the heart in the body is going to overrule the mind. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The, the heart center and the passion in the body is going to overrule the mind. That's what's going to happen here. Cause this is about the mind here. And here's the mind again with the justice energy. Here's the mind again with the two of swords. So I think as the next week or two goes along, you're going to step into something new here. Um, you're going to say yes to something, knowing that you have the strength, you have the attractiveness, you have the fire within you to step forward into something new. It doesn't have to be big. It can be something small. It can be something really small. But for you, there's something either symbolic here or something truly life-changing, or it's 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 like it's... You know, it's like, <laughs> it, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what I'm doing, but it's like tentacles reaching, re tentacles of excitement or tentacles of new possibilities, like reaching out and like, you know, the, it feathering you, feathering you, right? Feathering you is what it is. It's, it's like a feathering or the flames, the flames of passion. Um, you, you can start to feel them, right? So as you move forward in this experience that I've made to be quite dramatic, for some of you, it will be very dramatic. And for others of you, it will be something new that you're doing. And you'll be like, oh, this is what she meant. Well, she was sure pretty dramatic about that, right? There's something here that you're stepping into this with a very balanced perspective. You know that this could be something that you may not decide to do. You know that this could be something that you really are um, going to step into and you will um, step into a new adventure of some kind. It's like, you know that your two minds of this, right? The two sides of you are balanced in this. You know that you have the perspectives to keep you, um, to keep your moods uh, um, centered. You know that you have a way of thinking about this will, that will allow you to stay grounded and objective. Um, you know that you have a heart center that's big and bold and pumping and that you have passion within you that will help um, when the time is right for you, that will help you step into something new and something um, that is full of charisma and full of new new things popping off for you. You know that's in your future and you know that you have the ability to do that. So you have these two, um, these two major energies within you that are helping you to keep yourself balanced as you're stepping in here. And although your heart is pumping and you're wanting to put your own personal set of brakes on as you're walking through that doorway, nobody is going to know that you have um, competing energies, um, finding some sort of a alignment within you. Nobody knows of the battle that you fought within yourself as within yourself as you're walking up to that doorway. No one sees that because you are cool and collected like a cucumber, right? You know, you have that Scorpio sexiness, whatever you look like, it doesn't freaking matter. When you have that energy of alignment, stepping into something new, when you have that Scorpio intensity, when you merge that little bit of shadow with that light that's coming through you, it's attractive. It's attractive. It's the energy from within you that radiates out, that permeates the people around you, and it's attraction power. And as you move forward, I think you will have the um, the opportunity here to decide if you're going to step forward into this because we have the lover's energy here, 
right? We have a partner here um, of some kind that's a uh, complementary energy to yours. When we say this, it's going to be someone who is opposite of you, but when the two of you come together, there's something magical that happens. Very much a whole lot of intensity. Um, you can be very productive together. You could be very sensual together. You could be very creative together. It depends on what the relationship is going to be, right? If it's a business idea, then you can really produce together, right? The two, the two minds and the two hearts and the two passion centers are really going to be able to build something quite, um, quite attractive for the market that you're in, right? Or if you're um, going to be going um, and, and meeting an employer, the employer is going to really connect in with your energy and with your ideas and the way that you say things because he is going to have um, a completely different um, makeup, right? And so you have these two energies that are going to come together and have a lot of energy together. So just so you know that when you're stepping through this doorway, your soul already knows how big this is and your brain sort of intuitively already knows how big this is, right? You know, whether even if though it's small, it's still big in comparison to the size that you think it is when you first walk in the door, right? Even if it's small, what happens is bigger than what you think it's going to be. So if you think this is going to be someone that you're going to possibly um, date, well, what could come of it is somebody that you could possibly get into an intense relationship with. Or if this is someone that you're thinking you could possibly work for, well, this is someone that you could maybe really um, jumpstart a whole new career with, right? It's something that's going to be very intense. It's going to pop off. Now, with the lover's energy, we always have to be careful to understand sometimes the lover's energy is a lesson energy. Sometimes we go into this kind of energy, we can get swept up, we can get swept off our feet, and the story in that whirlwind that's created is a story of learning lessons. And so sometimes it can be very intense, it can be very troubling, and it can lead you down a pathway of great enlightenment. So it's important, and sometimes it can be a relationship that is long-lasting and the most beautiful experience that you've ever had. So when you step into a very, um, uh, 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 an experience of charisma like this, it's always important to really kind of be objective. And this is when the mind kind of comes back in and says, okay, what about this, this situation? What about this experience did I like? What about this experience kind of raised some red flags? What about this person did I really enjoy? What about this person did I, um, was I kind of reserved about? And sometimes with the lover's energy, it's important to know, okay, if we're having our first, this is a page of cups, so this is an introduction. If we're having our first meeting, what did we talk about? Did we talk about entry level things or did we talk about deep, passionate things? Because sometimes when we move through the intro introductory information directly to deep, passionate things, although at, at the time it can really kind of suck us in and be quite um, sexual or be quite, um, if it's a job, it would be like, oh my gosh, this is the big, best thing ever. I'm going to do this. I'm going to quit tomorrow. And I'm going to go right into this job. When it's like that, um, when you skip over the introductions and you skip through the processes without, when you skip through the system without due process, sometimes it can be one of those harder lessons. So it's important to realize that there are, there is a step-by-step -step process in the energy that goes into creating a relationship. And if those processes are, are um, skipped, right, where you have an introductory energy, you kind of get to know each other, um, you go through a certain process of discovery that takes some time, and then you become more and more intense as it, as it continues. If you skip some of those levels, it could be a sign that this is going to be a lesson of enlightenment rather than an experience of health and love. Okay, I'm just saying that. I'm not saying that that's the case here, but this is why we have the two of swords, right? It's like finding clarity um, being able to, to be discernible in this, in this process, being able to be objection, um, to be objective in this process and to always keep your cool, keep your cool and stay, um, connected to this four of pentacles. Cause that's what you're, 
That's what you're not wanting to give up. And so if you can remember the Four of Pentacles while you're in the lover's energy, right? If you can remember the, isn't that interesting? If you can remember the Four of Pentacles when you're in the lover's energy, I think you can stay objective about this situation. But if you forget about this Four of Pentacles and you let that Four of Pentacles color mesh around in this very intense lover's energy, um, you could be in for um, a very intense situation that could be um, that you might eventually have to backtrack from or to, you know, to step out of at some point. So it, it is in a very exciting period of time. You are being pushed forward into it. So there is something for you to experience here for you to learn whatever that is for you, because what I have realized um, and, and what many of us have realized in our lives is that our spiritual team doesn't stop us from having experiences, do they? Um, they, they? They don't stop us from having experiences. They do help guide us and they help bring us information that can help us think through things, but they certainly don't stop us from having experiences because if we would stop having experiences, if we would only experience the light and we wouldn't experience anything that was difficult, we would lose um, the, the expansive um, qualities of our journey because we would not have anything that would challenge us. We would not have anything that would hurt us. We would not have intensity in our lives. And there's something very beautiful about intensity. There is something beautiful about the shadow. Without the shadow, there's no urgency right? There's no urgency. There's no propellant. There's no fuel to move forward into the light. So over the next couple of weeks, Scorpio, I think that you guys are stepping into something new, trying something new, um, and, and really trying to figure out, okay, what, what do I do with this situation now that feels more exciting and bigger than I thought it would? Um, and I think when you step forward here with these pages, I think that you intuitively know that this is something that is going to be an experience for you. And your soul is excited, but your brain, see your brain here, your soul and your heart are excited because their reasons for being here are different than the organ in your mind, in your skull, which is an organ. It's a tool. We have to remember right? The heart and the soul, the soul carries on. The, the mind is an organ, right? That organ can be influenced by your spiritual team and helped by your spiritual team, but it is an organ and it does help us, but it's the soul and the heart that drive the expansion. It's the soul and the heart that drive the expansion. And, and, that's why we're here in the human experience. So I think I've got everything. I let, let me go into the lover's energy just a little bit here, but I think I've pretty much got what, what was meant to come out. Let me go into the lover's energy and see what's here. Tell me more about this lover's energy. Devil. I knew it. I freaking knew it. It's this energy that, you know, those people that, that really know the tool of tarot know that the lovers and the devil have a very close connection. And this is what I was describing. So um, I don't need to describe it anymore. It's exactly what I was talking about just a minute ago when I was talking about the, um, the, 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 the contrasting energies around the lover's energy. Eight of Pentacles. Three of Swords. Six of Cups. I mean, yeah, Spirit's not going to tell you anymore. I mean, this is something that your soul is wanting to experience. Um, it's something that you're going to be really focused on. It's something that could very well um, create a healing within you. Somehow it's going to bring you to a healing place. 
Um, it's going to affect your heart center with the Three of Swords. You have a three threes now. You have the Three of Cups, the Three of Wands, and the Three of Swords. So that's three threes. And you have a six here, the Six of Cups, soul connection, right? Soul connection, heart and soul here. Um, it could do something to help your, your hurting heart, and it could help mend your soul or advance your soul in some way. Whatever this is, you're not going to really be able to focus on anything else. You know that there's something here that's meant for you to experience. The fool. Yep. Something new here that's meant for you to experience. Whether you just tip your toe into it and pull it back out again and say, no, thank you. That is an experience, right? If you tip your toe into this energy, the lovers with the devil, and you say, ooh, that burns. I felt that before. And you say, no, what does that tell your spiritual team? That tells them that you've learned and you're ready to move on to the next level, right? If you dip your toe into this and you're like, you know what? I've never had an intense relationship. I've never had an intense relationship like this. I've never had the, the chance to, to have a career that really lets me live in myself. Or I've never had a, a chance to be in a, in a sexual, passionate relationship. And I want to experience this. And this could be a long-lasting relationship for me. And you decide to step forward into it. That is an experience, right? Whatever this is, it has something here. Because we do have the soulmate energy. We also know that soulmates can teach us and they can love with us, right? In so many different ways. But there is something new here for you to experience. However you want to. Remember, we create our realities. We co-create our realities with, with the energies that are around us and, and the, the higher power that we connect in with. We co-create. So here you are in the driver's seat. Here you are in the driver's seat and you get to decide, Scorpio, which way you're going to go. All right. So I am going to move into the extended reading now. Um, what are we going to look at? <sighs> Well, I'm going to dig deeper into the lover's energy, the devil energy, and the fool energy in the extended reading. And I think the six of cups energy, I'm going to go deeper into these energies and see what we can pull out. And then I think we'll look um, at early June to see where this is in early June to see what kind of energies are here. So I think that's what I'll do in the extended. So those of you who are interested in that, the link is below in the comment section or in the information section below the video. Um, and for those of you that are happy with this, that makes me happy too. Um, I'll see you all back out on YouTube in another week or so with another update for the energy of Scorpio. Thank you very much.